Ladies and gentlemen, here he is. Please give it all you got. Please welcome Tom Wilson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Thank you. 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 Only 28% of you are actually applauding. <laughs> the rest of you are just, uh, thank, thank you very much. You Don't go. sneak up behind yeah. me, man. Yeah. I, I almost took you out with a kung fu. I know you could kill me in five different ways. I could. <laughs> what? what? Check one, two, three. But how's it going tonight, everybody? Woo! Tonight is yeah. tonight. It's official tonight. Yeah. How, we have, we have, hello. How are you? I've met you guys before. I've met so many of you before. Hi, Tom. And uh, I'm glad we've come together because I'm going to take this opportunity to talk about Amway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, I'm a distributor, and I'm here to talk about a fabulous opportunity for each and every one of you. <laughs> it's good to be in Pennsylvania, huh? Yeah. Welcome yeah. home, Tom. Yes. Some people have come here from Ohio, and we welcome you, though, though we judge you a little bit, but we welcome you. But Ohio, I'm from Pennsylvania, did you know that? I'm a son of Pennsylvania, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I'm from the, you know, the good side, but still, it's fun, it's fun. No, we get along with each other. We have a great city. You guys have a good city that always beats us at sports, but that's okay. The Eagles are doing good. Who though. cares about hockey? <laughs> um, but you know, Ohio. I, I I know people are from Ohio here, and Ohio has their thing, right? What do they do in Ohio? They say, "Go wait." Right? See, that was spirited. Did you feel the energy in that thing? I don't know. <laughs> but they do that. O-H-I-O, O-H-I-O, don't they? Ohio people, yes, all the time. Yeah. It's time for us to start competing with you people. P-E! <laughs> and, and you have to spell the whole thing. <laughs> I'm starting this from the ground up, people. You know, we're gonna start this. Did you say Tom started? Okay, the Ohio people, they started it with their state because it's four letters, O-H-I-O. We can still do it. P-E-N-S-Y-L-B-A-N-I-A, yes! Start the show. I've been in movies, been on TV. That makes me a celebrity. Tom Wilson starting his thing, cause he is very important. Kapow. <laughs> Excitement crackling through the air. Lose your worries, forget your cares. You people in back should be sitting up here because sometimes I spit when I sing. <laughs> and you can sell it on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> Showbiz is my life, my friends. I know just what to do. I'm a guy you've seen on TV, and face it, people on TV are better than you. People on TV are just better than you. Kim Kardashian, Anderson Cooper, Donald Trump, and me. Ooh, I've survived in showbiz, I paid my dues. You gotta give me credit, you can't refuse. I know a guy who knows a guy who knows Tom Cruise. Yes, I'm that connected. But I'm not in Scientology. Ooh, back to the future, freaks and geeks. I was in a big hit movie called The Heat. My resume's longer than 50 feet. No, a lot of it is unimpressive. I was on a TV show with Scott Bayo. You might think you don't like me. You think I'm on an ego trip. Hey, but I don't care because I'm famous. And that's more important than relationships. Fame's more important than relationships. Tom Wilson, he's kind of famous. He has lost all of his friends. Big whoop. Tonight is going to be the best. A showbiz party, a big success. Just lower your standards. Start expecting less. And let those lowered expectations start with me. me. Thank 
Thank you. Please, in the back, stop. You're crushing the kids in front. <laughs> It's nice to see you all on an exciting Friday evening in the greater Monroeville, Pennsylvania Metroplex. Yeah. Monroeville, gateway to Butler County. <laughs> it's good to be here. Um, we usually do Q&A, you know, but I come out and I just do my goofball stuff. And I try to tell a couple stories because it, it, it's, it's a pretty consistent question that I get. So I tell a couple stories, and then we'll do Q&A stuff. If that's what you guys want to do, you know, fine with me. As you can see, I'm pretty relaxed. Sometimes a little too relaxed. But, um, but I'll just tell you a couple stories. Because people want to know, hey, how did you get the role in Back to the Future? Like, how did that happen? And I was a, I was a young actor. And I was, I was trying to get any job. As any young actor would, you just try to get jobs. I mean, you're just trying to get commercials. You're trying to get on TV shows. You know, I was the guest football player named Moose on a, a very special Facts of Life. <laughs> I try to describe my episodes of TV shows as a very special. You know how they do that. <laughs> so, so I was on the Facts of Life, and I was on uh, Knight Rider. Yeah, Knight Rider wow. with, yeah, with Hasselhoff, the Hasselhoff. Yes. Yes. The, I'll, I'll, I could redo my whole role pretty much in that Knight Rider. Hey, come back with that car! <laughs> That's pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. Please, Woo! don't get too excited. Woo! And coming out of character, and I'm back. <laughs> I, uh, as some people know, because a guy brought biscuits, I was in the national commercial that introduced biscuits at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Huh? Yeah. You're welcome. Yes. You're welcome, everybody. Yeah. Without me, no biscuits. <laughs> so, yeah, you're welcome. I'll read that one for you, too. Fresh buttermilk biscuits made from scratch. Boink. <laughs> <laughs> So I done a bunch of that stuff, but I hadn't been in a movie. You know, this is a big movie. That, this was, a, you know, various. Everyone wants to be in movies. A movie actor. So they're doing this movie, Back to the Future. Steven Spielberg's producing. Robert Zemeckis is directing it. Big time stuff. So I didn't think I could get an audition for that. My my agent calls them. Hey, you got to see this young guy. He's very good. He's a really good actor. Got to see him. So I come into the audition with the assistant casting director. Nice lady, but she sits there as well. You're supposed to be God's gift to acting, so let's see what you can do with this. Okay. A little bit of pressure. So I act through the scene. They had written a specific scene between Biff and George McFly that was, uh, because it was sort of secretive about the story itself. So I act the scene. Let me get Mike in here. She calls the casting director, he comes in. Do it, do it again. So I acted again, and again, and again, and then they called me back. And to this day, I've never been called back. A call, they call it a callback, where you go home, and they think about it, and then the, the crowd of auditioners just gets smaller, from 800 to 350, you know, all the way down. Then you get called back, and back, and back. I've never been called back more times than I was for Back to the Future, because they kept calling me back. We'd like to see. Well. They said, we'd like to pair you up with some guys, some guys who played George McFly. They just see. So I get, um, I go to the audition with other guys, with guys who are going to try to be George McFly. And the first guy, they say, Tom, uh, this is Crispin Glover. Why don't you guys meet and you go out to, you know, and, and you do the scene together? I said, well, uh, okay. So we go outside. It was like next to a hedge out of the parking lot. You know, well, let's, let's see how it will go. I said, hey, McFly, did you finish my homework? And he no, no, Beth. I just, you know, he changes into this thing, this sort of human question mark. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. And, and I stopped the scene. And I'm thinking, well, I probably won't be cast as Beth. Maybe I'll be one of Beth's gang members. That'd be great. But if they don't hire this guy, they're out of their minds. Because he's unbelievable. Well, anyway, 
I never auditioned with another actor besides Crispin from that point forward. We came in together, and then we just did it together, and together, and together, back and forth. They called and said, we want to put you in age makeup and see how you would act as an older person. So we did that, and we did that. And then the last night, I had tickets to a Bruce Springsteen concert. Oh, no. Eight o'clock, LA Sports Arena, okay. Springsteen with my girlfriend, <laughs> my super hot girlfriend, <laughs> who's now been my wife for 32 years. Yeah, congrats, good stuff. So, so, so I have Springsteen tickets, I said, they want to see you for this Back to the Future thing, 6.30 tonight, 6.30. So I'm waiting, I have Springsteen tickets, I go in for this last thing, and it's a big conference table, and Steven Spielberg's there, and the head of the studio, and Robert's went, oh, the important people. I've never had an audition like this in my life. And we don't, we go through the scene once, we fly, no, we're doing the thing. And the director, Bob Zemeckis, is taking these pictures. I really want to see you get physical. I really want to see you, like, bully this guy. See what, you know, what it would be like. Let's go for it. So, you know, being crazy, I'm like, okay, I'm kind of a go for it guy, you know. It's like, all right, man, let's go. And I just have him in headlocks, dragging him around the room, dragging him across the table. And I'm just sort of doing the whole scene, very physical. I grab his shirt, I lift him up into the air. But in all of this physicality, and all this going for it, I've completely lost my place in the scene. I don't know the lines anymore. I don't know what I'm doing. And I, I, like, I have the guy in the air, you know? Just like, uh, I put him down. I, uh, you know, that's, and scene, that's what I, that's it, you know. And they go, oh, well, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Tom. Thanks. Crispin, could you stay here, Tom? Thank you very much for coming in. <laughs> I was the saddest person who has ever been at a Bruce Springsteen concert. <laughs> I'm serious, the whole crowd, thousands of people, bah, 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 dancing in the dark. I was in section Q with my girlfriend. <laughs> they just destroyed every opportunity I ever had. The next morning they called, they said, you got the role of Biff in Back to the Future. So it was unbelievable. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. Okay. It was great fun. It was, it was hard work. It was great fun. Then uh, one other story, we'll do Q&A. Um, um, people ask, which was your favorite? Back to the Future to play, because so many different iterations, so many different ages and people, Biff, Griff, Buford, Mad Dog, Ten, this age, that age, which was your favorite? I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know how to ride a subway. I do not know how to ride a horse. <laughs> So for a kid from Philadelphia, like Pittsburgh, to get to go on a big set of a big movie, a big Western, and ride horses with Corky Randall, the man who used to ride stunts with John Wayne, who taught John Ford, the great director, how to ride a horse, to learn how to ride with him, to learn all these things, to work with historic Western people, learn how to ride a horse, rope over my head. I mean, I couldn't imagine, you know, kind of galloping on a horse and keeping the rope over your head as you're going to learn quick draw of a gun. I had to learn from Hollywood's most famous quick draw expert, a man, Arvo Ojala, the, uh, the, uh, the slowest, fastest gun I've ever seen. The, Arvo at that point was in his 80s and he was still a quick draw expert. But he would move so slowly. You said, this guy's a quick draw expert? Well, Tom, when you think about it, you have to have a thumb that hits the, the, the hammer of it. That's how he do it. He could, he could shoot three bullets out of a gun, a single action revolver, which is in the Old West, it's kind of the hammer goes back to click, 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 bang, click, click, bang, as the, as the bullets go around. So you had to click, click, bang. So the first one you hit it with your thumb, click, click, and then you bring it up, bang. And then he would use his other hand 
and hit one with his thumb, click, click, bang, and then this pinky, click, click, bang, and shoot three bullets. I just go, bang! <laughs> now you see, I shot three bullets. So we're, we're gone now. <laughs> used to be there, but kaboom. <laughs> so that was, that was a great, great thrill. And, 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 and acting in that movie where um, I was basing a lot of my movements, the way that I carried my body, the way that I had my hand in the, in the holster, in this thing, off of uh, Lee Marvin's performance in a movie called The Man Who Shot Liberty Bounds, which if you haven't seen it, see it. Two, two of the great historic bad guys in westerns, Jack Palance in the movie Shane, which is the scariest guy, boy, wow. And, and Lee Marvin in The Man Who Shot Liberty Bounds. So I was moving like him. There's a quirk, that small whip that I'm carrying. I'm doing that because that's what Lee Marvin had in The Man Who Shot Liberty Bounds. He had a short rope that he beats up, he beats up Jimmy Stewart with that in the movie. So I'm doing that. In the, in the movie were three historic Western actors, Doug Taylor and Harry Carey Jr. and Pat Buttram, guys who'd been in a million Westerns. It was just such a thrill for everybody to be working with them, guys from the, the history of Hollywood at this table. And Pat Buttram had a sort of, you'd recognize his voice, sort of a voice like this, kind of an old country voice. And I go up to meet them, you know, one of the scenes we're doing, and I go up to talk to them, and, and Pat goes, you know, Tom, me and the fellas have been talking about it, and boy, you know who you remind us of? You ever see Lee Marvin and the man who shot him for the balance? Yes! Yes! So, historic Western approved. But, um, but it was just, it was a huge thrill to be in the footsteps of who I think are just Hollywood history, you know? Because some people, like yourselves, I think, uh, appreciate it and think it's great. A lot of people don't, but you know, people are interested in what they're interested in, you know what I mean? But, but for me, uh, I, I love those old movies uh, and it's just a thrill. I mean, the first, the first Back to the Future, there was an older man, quite old, who was doing my makeup, who was doing some uh, of the prosthetic pieces that I did as the, as the older Biff. And I just wondered, gee whiz, I mean, the gentleman is, you know, is quite elderly. It's interesting that he would be still, still working. And the other makeup artist says, you know, Tom, he worked on the makeup in The Wizard of Oz. Wow. What? Unbelievable, you know, to be a part, just, a, just near that kind of history. You know. Anyway, that's just me. I still shoot on the Paramount lot, you know, and I'm walking down the Paramount lot with a bunch of young people, or, you know, you know the, the technicians and the uh, assistant directors, the kids, and they've got their microphone, their walkie-talkies and everything, and I just say, oh my gosh, guys, this, is, this was William Holden's yeah. office in the movie Sunset Boulevard. And Gloria Swanson came in in her, in her limousine and met Cecil B. DeMille right at this door. Blank. <laughs> like, what are you talking about, dude? We're just going to lunch. <laughs> so, you know, two weeks their own, but it was a thrill for me. Anyway, I know we have limited time because, you know, Lou Ferrigno is going to come out. We're going to kind of, you know, arm wrestle because I can take Ferrigno. But, <laughs> whatever. Like, oh. I'm Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> but he's not here. Is he? Oh, oh, hey, I meant that with great respect. Lou, Lou Ferrigno, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yes, yes. I know you're all fans of his, but I'm a particularly big fan of his. But by that, I mean I am physically large. And I'm a fan of his. But, um, so that was it, to be, to be just a part of, of the history of movies and to meet these people, to meet these older actors who knew, that was such a great thrill to me. And it still is, it still is. I'm just, I'm still, I'm the guy on every set, you know, and I'm on some TV show and it's an older actor and we're in a scene and I'm like, that guy was in Serpico, you know, whatever. <laughs> 
So, you know, so I'm, the, I'm that guy. Now, I know, I know we have other people coming and, and other things, so I want to have your questions and everything. So I'm certainly, Mike, Mike, you want to sort of see the questions? Or that, you have that's the question guy. The question guy? Got a question, raise your hand. Okay. I got a question. I'll well, start you got a question? You don't get question. to have a question because of that shirt. We just... <laughs> Actually, this is his question. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, back to the Future, did you do any scenes with Eric Stoltz? And can you tell us uh, a little bit about what happened with I did uh, almost all the scenes with Eric Stoltz. I mean, I did. We did. We did so much with Eric Stoltz that that we were kind of asking each other this question: Hey, you got anything lined up after this? It was sort of wrapping up, wrapping up. So uh, Eric Stoltz, for those of you who don't know, was cast as the first Marty, the original Marty in the movie, and something was going on. They they thought you know he was miscast. It wasn't. Um, it just wasn't good enough for the filmmaker. Lou Ferrigno's coming up because he has a part of the Eric Stoltz story, I'm sure. Oh, you have a question after the Eric Stoltz. Eric, uh, Eric was fired from the movie. There, there was something wrong in the set. People were nervous. I thought, of course, because I'm a young man, it's me. I'm going to get fired because I'm not good. And, and uh, production shut down. The producers called me at home, said, Tom, could you come in and have a meeting with us? We'd like to talk to you. Oh my gosh, it's true. I'm getting fired. My first big movie, my first big check. Oh no, they said, you know, they said, just come in. I said, you can tell me over the phone. Just tell me over the phone. I can take it. We'd like to tell you the person. I go into the office, you know, just like, okay. Just stand up, shake their hand, say thank you for this opportunity, and then I'll work on an Alaskan fishing boat, and we'll just move away. And, everything. and they said, Tom, we have some bad news. We had to fire Eric. <laughs> Not me, right? I'm still working. Yes, you're stupid. Hey, man, is he okay? So we continued with a TV guy from the TV show, Michael J. Fox, and uh, and the rest is history. Their takes on the role were very different, and uh, you know, and, and Michael's a great guy, and I and I loved working with him, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, Lou. Anyway, uh, I got a question for you. But first of all, I never see him do stand-up comedy. The guy's great, and I have to say, uh, being a great actor, I got a question for you, for everybody. When you play the older version of Biff, yes, have you done research? I mean. To play the older character. Yes, yes. Um, I st I went to uh, uh, I went to the mall. <laughs> I literally went to the mall, well, and I, like I sat. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I, I went to the mall, and I I literally I just looked at old people. <laughs> I sat in the uh, you know the food court, and yeah. I just had a nice tea, and I just looked, and I looked, and I looked, and I looked, and I found. I really found that old people, <laughs> it sounds, old people don't act old, okay? They're fine. I just found that when they're older, their head goes down a little bit like this, their feet get a little wider, and their voice gets a little bit lower. So it's just kind of like this, kind of this movement rather than this guy. So Biff, Biff has a high voice. Hey McFly! I thought I told you never to come in here. Older Biff. Hey McFly. I thought I told you never to come in here. Buford Mad Dog Town. Hey McFly. I thought I told you never to come in here. So it's a matter of, you know. It's as you know, you have to, there only, there's only so much you can do. I mean, we're human beings, we're not magicians. So you have your voice. You have your eyes and you have your body, right? And you just do your best to do it. It's not perfect, but yes, that's how that's how I prepared for it. Make sense? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. You okay with that question? Yeah. Great question. Thanks, buddy. Another question for you right over here. Mr. Wilson, uh, I saw some of your pop culture videos on your on your Facebook and some of your YouTube channels and uh, Twitter. My question is, how does it feel to be immortalized as an icon yourself? To be immortalized as an icon myself. <laughs> you know, it feels wonderful, really. Um, 
The iconography of Back to the Future, if this makes sense to you, is outside of my control. You know, it's not something that I that I steer or that I'm even really a part of because that part of Back to the Future is in your mind. You know, it's in your mind. I mean, it's different in everyone's mind, but, but it's something, it's a world that you create. Your idea of popular culture, and I have the same you know, ideas of my idea of popular culture. So, I really, I mean, if you have to get a sense, I think, I'm just a regular guy from outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I cannot believe, believe, that this shot that I took, I'm gonna drive to California. I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna try my best. And I'll probably get kicked in the teeth and come home, but you know what? You know what, at the end of my life, I'm gonna say, you know, I tried my hardest and I went for it. And I had the guts to give it a shot. And yes, you know, maybe I'm not as good as them ultimately, I don't know. But I tried and I feel good about that. So, I can't believe that I kept getting jobs. <laughs> you know? I can't believe it. I can't, I can't believe it. Now, you know, the Back to the Future comes and all you can do is, you know, your, your very best. Your very best. And then Back to the Future, the sequels of Back to the Future happen in between. I did a bunch of movies and stuff as regular guys. But I mean, a movie like Back to the Future 2 or 3, and they say, you're gonna play this guy at this age, you're gonna play in their 50s, you're gonna play in your 80s. You're gonna play in an alternate universe of the same character, yet different. You're gonna play a different guy, Griff, your own grandson, and you're gonna play an old Western gunslinger. Oh, and honestly, I went home and I like went right to bed, you know? <laughs> because something hits you so hard that like, I gotta, I gotta go lay down, you know? <laughs> Not because it's like, this is a wonderful opportunity. This is really like, oh my God, oh my God I hope I don't blow this. I mean, this is like, I can't, you know, but what do you do? You just start thinking. You start using your brain, you start going to the mall and watching people, you start moving your body in different ways, you start looking at other actors to rip off whatever they did, <laughs> and you come up with something, you know? So I, I, I can't say enough how much I, uh, like I appreciate the appreciation of people for the Back to the Future movies and for uh, you know, and look for the work I did in them because it was, you know, because it was hard work. It was something that you create, you know, and you don't know if people are going to like it when you create it. You're just trying something, you know. So to create something, to work hard at it, to really go to be at work when it's dark outside and get home when it's dark outside because you're working hard is there's satisfaction in that. But to have people then see it and go, man, that was great. You know, that's just, I mean, wow. It's unbelievable. So, it's a fantastic thing. It's a fantastic thing to be a part of, but there's a, there is that comic sense of the whole thing. Because, you know, because I go home and, you know, just take out the trash and, you know, and the dog digs holes in the backyard. And I'm just, you know, I'm just like a regular guy, literally like everyone. But what I do is just, you know, it's unusual and it's out of the ordinary. And people have come to think of it as a different thing. Some people think of it as a better thing. It's not, it's just a different thing. It's just like my kids are just kids and just dad works. Right? Just dad goes to work and that's what he does. But your dad was this and that. Yeah, it's my dad, so what? You know, that's what he does for his job. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. It makes sense, I went off on a you know, kind of a tangent -y thing. That's okay. 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 Yeah. Anybody else with a question? Yeah, Sir, yeah, back here. Uh, we got Fort Lauderdale happening. Uh, I if, you talk about the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. if I could talk about the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, that was a big thrill to do. I've done the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson and with Jay Leno and, uh, and David Letterman and a lot of people. It was always nerve wracking. It's nerve wracking, very nerve wracking. But Johnny Carson was uh, very nice to me, very supportive of me, and, and really, um, it was a wonderful experience. My goodness. To be on the Tonight Show, my grandfather was alive at that time. He said, "Pop up, I'm being, I'm doing the Tonight Show." That was like, 
you might as well have told him I'm, I'm moving to Mars. You know? <laughs> You're going to be on the Johnny Carson show? So, so it was a great thrill. It was a great thrill. And it was good. Johnny Carson show was my first one. And they have this interview that they do before you do the show. Uh, kind of a producer talks to you. What, you know, do you have any funny stories from the set or something that maybe Johnny could ask you about? Now, Johnny Carson liked for there to be no surprises. He liked to kind of know where, what direction you would like to go in, and he would like a card with a number of questions that we can, you know, so we know where we're going. And he would always be you kind know, of look down at the card and hit that. So it always kind of made sense and flowed. David Letterman, they would do that same preview. Do you have any story, anything? You would do that whole thing, and they would give him a card, and he didn't pay any attention to the card at all. At all. So we would just talk about whatever, whatever you would talk about. So, so one was very thrilling, but you knew the plan, and the other was sort of thrilling and sort of really scary because you didn't know what was going to happen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Question right yeah. over here. Um, did you see the Back to the Future cartoon that came in the early 90s? I not only saw it, young man, I was the star! Yeah, of course. I was, uh, yes, I was, in, uh, I was in the cartoon, which is now, if you guys are interested, available on VHS. <laughs> So yeah, I was in that, because who wouldn't do that, huh? When Biff gets to be like a Spartacus-like guy, when you get chariot races, when you get to be all kinds of things. So we had fun with that, and I was just, at that point, I was just beginning to try to be a part of a voiceover, the, the voiceover world of show business, which is, a, which is a huge world that is just, I mean, actually, it's just beginning to be appreciated more in comms and things like that, who were the voices behind this thing. So very early on, I was trying to do that, and the Back to the Future show really helped that, because we did a few a few seasons of that, and I met directors and other actors, and sort of learned how to approach it better from a business perspective, and then went off and had done, you know, uh, zillions of different cartoons and stuff like that. Yeah. Yes? Um, one of the funniest movies I've seen last year was The Heat, or in the last five years was The Heat, I loved your character in that. I was wondering if you could maybe talk a little bit about the movie and your interactions with the other actors. The Heat was a lot of fun. Paul Feig is a friend of mine and big time, very important, very talented director. Well, I, I knew Paul like from stand-up comedy you know, decades before, and Paul and I had worked on the show Freaks and Geeks. It was a fantastic show, a show called Freaks and Geeks, which is, yeah, if you haven't seen it, honestly, I never tell people to see something, but it's a DVD set now, check it out. It's really a great show. Uh, so I saw so Paul from that. We did The Heat, and you never know, honestly, when you're meeting a big, 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 big star, you really don't know what the deal's gonna be with them, you know? You don't know if they're gonna be a totally normal, nice person, or if you say, hi, good morning, my time, and they go, talk to Rick. <laughs> oh, you have a person to do, to say, you that kind of thing. So uh, uh, Sandra Bullock was fantastic. Melissa McCarthy was fantastic. They're funny, fantastic ladies. And really, well, I've got to do shorter answers so we get more questions. But the heat, especially how Paul directs now, uh, this is my opinion for movie files. Digital entertainment, digital technology, has completely changed the way that specifically comedy actors approach filming. Previously, in a Back to the Future, in a previous comedy, when film was running through the camera, that is just money, money going on. So you rehearse, and you rehearse, because we don't want to shoot film yet. Where you rehearse, you rehearse. Okay, we're gonna do a take now. All those, all those things you've heard, rolling. Speed, all the, the, the machines are running, and action. You do the thing that you've rehearsed and you hope it's funny. You change it a couple of times, but it's a couple of times because it's a lot of film and we have other things to shoot. Now, digital technology. The film now that you take is just like the camera is rolling. It's just on. So it's just like improvise, just do whatever you want. Just, just make up some stuff. We already, you know, we do one take, where it's the script. 
We'll do another take where it's a script, but be a little broader. Don't be afraid to change something a little bit. And then we'll do one take where you don't know, just go crazy, just make stuff up. Just do it. Do it. So in that, so Melissa, <coughs> Melissa picks up a Tic Tac box, <laughs> right? Two Tic Tacs left, right? And she's shaking this, you know. Just look at these, what is this, you know? And just, she's, she's talking about my balls, okay? <laughs> so Melissa just throws down the box, like, like I'm discussing her, I said, Melissa, Melissa, you have to hit me in the head with a Tic Tac box. It's gonna be funny. She said, I'm gonna, I can't hit you in the, listen, it's gonna be funny in the movie. The movie's gonna live forever. So she says, what are these? Your box, she throws it at me. She hits me in the shoulder. You gotta hit me in the face. I don't wanna hit you in the face. It live forever, it'll be funny. Hit me right here. And the camera's rolling. So hit me in the face, come on. So she hits me, but I mean it hits me so far centered that my face actually goes like <laughs> But that made the joke. That that I think if we had shot ten years earlier, I don't think that that scene would have been done. You know, because it kind of would be, well, she keeps missing them with the rocks. It's okay. We have we have what we need. Let's 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 move on. So that changed. But the heat was a very funny movie very improvisational movie, which both ladies were, were, were fantastic at. So we, we had a lot of fun, we had a lot of fun. And my mom, God bless her, she saw the heat. And she says, uh, well, there was a lot of bad language in that movie. But I have to say, boy, I really laughed a lot. That was really funny. So it was, it was really great to be part of, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Question for you yep. right here. Uh -huh. Hey Tom, uh, in the movie Blood In, Blood Out, it's a very uh, serious topic about gang violence, but your scenes with Benjamin Bratt, there was uh, quite a bit of levity. Did you bring that to the role or was that scripted that way? I bring levity wherever I go. <laughs> um, it was uh, in, the, in the audition process for Blood In, Blood Out, Taylor Hackford, the director, uh, wanted uh, me to improvise and Ben to improvise. And I just think, I've been around police, we, we did a lot of ride-alongs and everything. And let's face it, everyone at their job isn't taking it particularly seriously, you know? It's pretty lighthearted. So my improvisations were, were just pretty lighthearted. Just emptying, emptying a guy's pockets at the station and just splitting the gum with him. You know, that's stuff, you want gum? Yeah, gum. Um, so that kind of thing, but, 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 of course, it's a very serious, I mean, we, <laughs> we were doing ride-alongs with LAPD. Uh, it, was, it was very, very crazy, very crazy. We were, so we're doing all these ride-alongs. We did many, many kind of hairy things, including, including a long chase where we're just, and, and we're behind like three other police cars with the lights going and everything, and we're going in lights and the police, uh, the, the, the officer who's driving us, we're in the back seat, is saying, now if anything happens, the key to the shotgun is right on my belt, right on the right side. The taser is in the trunk. You, you know, my service revolver is like, I don't, I'm not gonna, I don't want the shotgun key, sir. I, I want to, I'm gonna change my shoes and run, okay? That's, that's gonna be mine, pretty much, that's my plan. So we go to the, we go to the lunch in sort of, East LA, you know? and uh, so we're having lunch. We're having lunch with these two uh, LAPD officers. And a kid runs into the restaurant and says, officers, guys are shooting at me. And the, the officer's like, what do, you, what do you mean? He goes, they're right there. They're shooting, the guys were in the car doing a drive-by while we were it, you know, eating at a restaurant, so the, the police officer had to you know, run out of the restaurant and go and go uh, go chase them. So yes, it's a very very serious movie, but in the police station itself, yeah, I was very uh, lighthearted about the role because I because I was doing you know I was doing all kinds of um, uh, you know, disguise stuff. I was a, I was a narc. You know, so there were all kinds of scenes. Unfortunately, you know, I'm trying to get famous, and directors keep putting me in makeup to hide me from the audience. <laughs> but I had beards, and I was playing hippies and that, and all kinds of all kinds of different stuff. Yeah. 
Anybody else? Another yeah, question right here. I was wondering if you kept any props from Back to the Future. Uh, I have, I only own like three of the picture DeLoreans, you know. <laughs> I, just, I just drove those right off the set. Uh, people think that there's some subterranean vault full of things that I absconded with off the movie. The mystery. Uh, Tom goes down and he's got the Lost Ark right in that factory. He's got the thing. Um, no, then, then I'm just, I, I'm inexperienced at con. This is the first year I'm just, you know, trying this and meeting people and everything. I haven't done much. But what I'm amazed at is people in bringing me some item from the movie that they want me to sign. I'm like, what are you doing with this? I was trying to get this from them when I was in the movie. How did you get this? Where did you find this? Right, right. so uh, eBay, I bought it from a guy on eBay. So, so people generally have way cooler stuff than me. But the cool thing is, I'm myself. So sometimes I just hang myself on my own wall. And I just, you know, I just say, wow, my office is cool because I have cooler stuff than that guy. I actually have the guy from the movie. <laughs> I take a shower with him every day. I'm not trying to brag or whatever, but we're that close. I have seen him naked. <laughs> I know we're running out of time. I'm no, sorry. we're going to go as long as you want. No, we are not, Mike. <laughs> All right. Okay. I, uh, two things that I wish I had, I wish I had, was Biff's car, oh, the 46 yeah. Ford, yeah. Yes. and this dude's hat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. I wish I had a pen. We got a question right over here. Actually, the 46 Ford is in private hands, and it's with, uh, and I love this, it's with the family that, that, that had the car, that, that rents cars, like a movie. They're, anyway, they're a part of the industry, you know, and they have the cars, and they had the car, and they still have the car. And they realize that now that car is probably worth a lot of money, and they could auction it off or whatever. But they just, they, like me, they love the movies. They love being a part of that. You know, and as more than the money, they say we're just keeping the car because we love the car, not because we just have to sell everything, you know, for money. Question right over here. Of the three worlds, the comedy, the acting, and the voiceovers, which are the three, but of the three, are your favorites? Again, I, I um, back to, sort of back to this gentleman's question. I can't believe, I can't believe, that in high school, I didn't, I didn't fit in with a lot of groups. You know what I mean? I didn't fit in with a lot of groups. I wasn't, a, I wasn't an athlete. I wasn't a mathlete. I was, you know, but, but as you know, as you're a young person and you start trying to figure out, am I good at anything? What, what, what can I do? You know, do I have a skill set? And to begin working in the arts, you know. And just have, have people just start going, wow, that was really good. I mean, really good. And my first reaction was not, oh, looks like I'm an artist. Was like, it was actually like, I'm good at something. You're like, I, I have a talent at something. And like, like in acting, like in the school plays, where they say, no, you really have a talent at this. You know, and acting teachers, or art teachers say, you really should pursue this. So. I'm sorry, but in answer to your question, man, I have fun with all that stuff. You know, I love every bit of it. Now, some, now I do it for a living, you know, and I'm not kidding. When you do, as you, you all know, we all have jobs. When you do something for a living, it's work. You, it's work. It's work. Everybody goes to work, right? Everybody has to figure out ways that we're going to pay for food and our house and all that stuff. You know, so there is there are parts of it like that. There are parts of it like that. I wish I could paint all the time. I mean, it's just such a it's so wonderful. But you know, you just get hey, you have to buy food. 
You know, you have to do stuff. So, so, uh, so voiceover and acting in movies and stand-up comedy because things slow down. You, uh, you know, you can get cast in three movies in a row, and then you could just not get cast in any movies for a while. You know, it's not. It just doesn't pour in. You have to keep working at it and working at it. So, my goodness, stand-up comedy, the ability to say, well. It's a dry period, but you know what? I can put on a show, and at the end, they give me money. <laughs> and all of the people at the end of the show thought, well, that was really worth it. You know, <laughs> that's, that's, an, you know that's a wonderful thing. To be so, so I really have fun doing everything. But you know, I mean, stand-up comedy, just improvising in front of people, and just going off on your own ideas and your own crazy tangents, and having people appreciate that, boy, that's you know that's a that's fun. That's a fun feeling. Anybody else? And then I'll let everybody go because you have to go eat dinner and everything, and go to have your sandwiches with the French fries. I have a quick whatever question, you, Tom. Whatever you people do in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Why don't we just put the French fries in the sandwich? That's a stupid idea. Oh. Can we talk about what Back to the Future Two? I really crack up with the grip, with the voice and all that. How did you? How did the voice of Griff, all right, I will bore you with one more story, and then all you people out. I was in a play in high school, Frankenstein. It's actually, the Mary Shelley book was, uh, w was made into a play, which is actually not the Boris Karloff, but it's about creating this monster, and then what happens in the relationships of this fellow, Dr. Frankenstein, of the creature examining what it is to be a complete outcast, those kinds of issues. So, I was a big guy, I was bigger than everybody, so yeah, the, the theater teacher in high school decides to do Frankenstein. I was highly complimented. We want you to be the creature in Frankenstein. So I thought, Frankenstein not only not only was he uh, was he was he an outcast, but I wasn't going to act it like this. I will be a creature. I thought maybe something happened to his brain. <coughs> and his whole life is struggling to find words, trying to struggle to find expressing himself, trying to just you know have. <coughs> Try, try like that. Try just being absolutely frustrated at all the, at everything he was. So I ripped that off for Griff. <laughs> so I thought, well, Griff, and they put that in the script, by the way, because it was my idea. To make, to make <clears throat> Griff I, I have this thing with something happened. I said, maybe something. Like he almost lost his life on the operating table. And in the future, he has like some implants or electronic impulses that just because, as I said, you have to come up with something. You know, it's a completely different character. You better think of something. You can't, you know, what, what does Griff just say? The higher voice? I'm Griff! I'm, you know, you can't do that. <laughs> so I thought from that play, I had that idea, so I applied it to Griff and they actually put it in the script. There's, there's something wrong with his implants. How did you know that, that, that kind of thing? They made it a part of the script so you were prepared to see Griff and the unusual things I was doing with them. Now, get out! <laughs> Woo! But thank you very much. Have a great weekend, everybody. Have a lot of fun. It's very nice to see you all. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. God bless. P-E! There we go. Thank you so much. Oh, that was we appreciate it. Keep it going, he's still in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think he might be heading back to this table, which is next door to us. Hang out with the guy. Go visit, get an autograph, get a photograph. Incredible. Nicely done. Tom Wilson. Wow.